All right, guys, it's time to create our first VM in the Google Cloud. So each cloud provider has its own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, in this case with Google, they have two standard ways to create a Google VM, and that's new VM instance and new VM instance from template, and they are basically exactly the same. Uh, in AWS, you can uh, create a VM four different ways. And in Azure, you have to go through 15 screens to get to the uh, actual creation of the instance. So first thing first, name of the instance, it can be anything. The region, US Central 1, uh, zone, US Central 1A. Uh, there will be multiple zones just like in AWS here, uh, and they're geographically separated as we talked in the some of the introduction chapters. Now, there are multiple families, uh, machine CPU families in GCP. So N1 is the old class, N2 is the new class. We don't necessarily need the new class unless we have some specific need. So there are multiple types of machines that you, you can create, and the N1 standard one is by default selected. Uh, but we don't necessarily need it, so we're most likely be just using F1 Micro. Uh, another thing to point out here, and this is specific to Google, is you can create a machine with custom numbers of CPU and custom memory assigned to it. Uh, generally, it's not gonna have a whole lot of value, but there are situations um, like uh, using Oracle software. Oracle licenses, uh, the license cost depends on the number of CPUs being used to database server. So uh, Oracle databases are very memory hungry and you could create uh, configurations where you are j using just four vCPUs while you allocate 60 gigabytes of RAM because your database is 50 gigabytes in size uh, by using the regular memory and extended memory. So your license cost goes down, but you end up paying some extra money for the additional memory that you're allocating. So it's going to be, uh, the calculation is going to depend on how much you spend on the extra memory and how much you're gonna spend on the uh, licensing cost. But it's a good option to have then. Uh, in Google, the machine images are mainly based on DPM, like these are the free ones, while in AWS we had them uh, Amazon Linux, and I think Amazon Linux is the flavor of CentOS, but I'm not exactly sure. Now, these are all the different um, options you have that you can use with the uh, boot disks. Now, there are paid options, there are free options. Uh, and it's just up to your needs on what exactly uh, you would want to use in your particular case. I'm gonna skip the service account and access scopes. So firewall ports we need to open for HTTP and HTTPS traffic. The HTTP traffic uh, needs to be open on port 80, HTTPS traffic needs to be open on port 443. Like this is something you would do manually in AWS, but Google gives you the option of click, click, and, and it will do the job of opening those firewall ports. Well, opening those ports in the firewall so your machines can connect on HTTP and HTTPS. Now there are a bunch of advanced options here uh, that I am not really going to delve into uh, like at this stage. We will get into them if the time permits. Uh, like, I don't know how long I want to make this course. Anyway, there is one more peculiar thing that I want to cover about the GCP. Oh, and this is something that shows up in the certification exam. They want you to know the CPU architecture classes Intel has. Uh, I wouldn't have thought in like, I just couldn't think of somebody actually expecting you to know this information. And I had a exam question which asked me if I wanted to use a machine with these many CPUs 
which architecture will I go for? Sky Lake, Broadwell, Haswell, or Sandy? Like, somebody in Tennessee would go, uh, what do you want to know about Sky Lake and Broadwell and Haswell and Sandy? Uh, but they had the question, so I guess you guys are going to have to know what exactly these platforms entail because, well, every question counts. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create our VM. It's going to take a little bit, so I'm going to pause and come back. Uh, and I guess our machine is ready with the private IP of 10.128.0.4, which you will need when connecting from inside the network. While the external IP, you're going to need to connect to this machine from outside of the network, as in outside of the Google VPC. Now there are two ways, well there are actually three ways you can connect to this machine and they are pretty interesting. Uh, AWS, I think here Google has AWS B. So right there, um, you can click on that SSH button and it opens a window connected to your VM right in your web interface. And if you can see that transferring SSH key to the VM, this is the key that we downloaded uh, in the AWS VM creation. But in this case, Google automatically uh, maintains that key for you. You don't have to do that. And I think that's a cool thing to have. Now, another awesome way to connect to these machines uh, is through Google Cloud Shell, which you can activate by pressing that button. Uh, and this is like a bastion server in the web or you can call it a dedicated machine allocated to you because uh, the this particular machine state is preserved uh, between your connections. So you can actually create scripts that you want to execute uh, on multiple machines, let's say for monitoring uh, or getting the machine state, well, just about anything. You create them here, the next time you come back, the uh, file is going to be available to you. So like in this case, I'm creating this uh, random file and hopefully we get to, well, we will come back to this machine and this file will be right here. As I stopped recording um, for a little bit because one problem drove me completely bonkers. Uh, I was not able to SSH into this machine because the zone, like I haven't done the G Cloud in it, and it kept giving me this error. Now you tell me how much sense that error makes. And I tried just about everything. Now this is uh, from the command line on my machine, uh, and it works the exact same as the uh, Google Cloud Shell that we had. And finally I just, um, looked it up on the internet and this is where like and I'm just trying all things possible and the only thing I had to do was add the region uh, to the command like there's an option to add the region dash dash region and it doesn't make any sense because a public IP address is unique all over the world so why do I need to specify the region to connect to a EC2 machine. But there are like, all these cloud providers do some weird things and we're just going to have to live with that. So here I am um, also trying out the autocomplete functionality and looks like all I had to do was just tap, tap uh, and it would have populated the region for me. Uh, but like I said, didn't really phase my mind. Uh, when you configure the region properly uh, using gcloud in it, I think we don't face this problem. Like I have not faced this problem before. Um, anyway, uh, so here I was able to connect to this machine and then I used the exact same command uh, because this wasn't working on my local machine also, but I used the exact same thing to connect to that machine. Uh, from my local machine. Now, another interesting thing happened that I have not really paid attention to. So I was trying to verify I'm connecting to the exact same machine. And if you paid attention, there, I uh, 
a file I created called checking file. By the way, right here when I'm trying to connect, uh, Google Cloud is actually downloading the SSH keys and those SSH keys keep changing. So uh, the security of your local machine, well not local machine, your cloud machines is very really rarely compromised. Now here, uh, the interesting that thing that happened, I could not see the file and I'm like, what the heck, what happened? So on EC2 instances, the username is the EC2 user, but here it's using my username. So on this Google shell, it is Johnny Rebates, while on my local machine is Johnny Azad. And that's why that file does not show up here. So like, like I say, slash home Johnny Azad. All right, guys, uh, this has gone way longer than I would have wanted, but hopefully you learned a lot uh, from this lesson. So that's all for now, and I will see you in the next video.